Now the JBL LSR305, uh, if you've been on any forums or anything, you probably know that, that this is one of the most, most popular uh, speakers right now in the near field monitor market. I personally have never heard them, so it'll be interesting to, to hear what they sound like. Um, the specs are great. Uh, JBL has a great reputation. I've always liked the JBL sound too. Um, this being a five inch speaker, it's probably gonna have a much, uh, much better bass response than, uh, than I get out of the Elevate 3s, which that was probably their, their biggest downfall is, is there, yeah, they're good sounding, but the bass is a bit weak. It's hard to tell what's going on down there. So hopefully I'm gonna get better, uh, response out of the five inch that's in the, uh, LSR 305. The reason I, I bought these just now is uh, because if you click here, you'll see that uh, I'm on American Musicals website. JBL has a buy one get one half off instant rebate. Uh, it went through August 31st, which is that's the day. That's the day I'm recording this. So uh, if you didn't know about that, you just missed out on a on a good deal, really. Now that means the the pair. Uh, comes out to two twenty four ninety eight, but the cool thing is um, on American Musical side, if you if you buy the the pair of JBL LSR three hundred fives at the same time, you get this SM Pro uh, kit for free. This this uh, monitor starter kit, and inside the kit, you're getting um, you're getting uh, some of the foam pads, foam uh, isolation pads. You're getting four uh, three meter long uh, balanced XLR to TRS cables and the little uh, uh, SM Pro passive volume knob. They say that this is an, an $89 uh, uh, value thing. And I, I don't know, I mean, I'm sure it's pretty, pretty decent. It's good to get that stuff for free, especially with this deal when you're getting both speakers plus this pack for 224. I just couldn't pass it up, uh, so I thought it was really time to upgrade. Uh, when the half off deal goes away, that cost will be three hundred, two ninety nine ninety nine. This is still a good deal if you buy it from AMS and get this package in it. Um, one of the great things about that little uh, that little volume knob for me is that on my uh, Behringer mixer over here. Uh, it has a weird thing, and its monitor control is controlled by this knob here. Um, and you uh, control the monitor output plus the headphones. It's, they're both tied to this knob. And you can see how low the knob is set right now, but that's a, that's gets a pretty loud uh, signal right there. That's all it needs to fill the room with sound. So it's not actually a very good potentiometer. Uh, where that's concerned, I've got I've got my uh, Elevate threes right now currently hooked up to the monitor the monitor outputs on this mixer, which is controlled by this knob. And as I said, this knob is tied to to the headphones. So when I bring the the volume up for my monitors, it makes the headphones scream. You can't even put them on. At a normal volume, really. So you kind of—it was an either-or thing. I'd have to reach over and, and turn the monitors off if I wanted to hear headphones. It's not—it's not really that great of a deal. Uh, but with that volume, with the SM Pro volume knob, I'm going to be able to hook in uh, to the back of my uh, Behringer 1204 USB. Is what this is. I've got some main XLR outputs that you can probably see right down there. And I'm gonna hook into those instead of the control room outs that I'm in now. I'm gonna hook in there. Um, and that will take my uh, monitors off of this knob. This will just be headphones at that, at that point, which would be cool, an independent headphone control. And then I'll use this uh, this SM Pro knob to be my overall monitor mix knob, 
which will work out uh, work out really good, I think. And like I said, the kit comes with uh, all of that stuff in it, cables and everything to hook all that up, which is which is really cool. I think it's a really good deal, and that's what I bought, and I've got it right here. Um, and there's the speakers too. I'm not gonna do like an unboxing of the speakers, but I think I will do like a little uh, unboxing on this starter pack. So here's this uh, SM Pro Active Speaker Starter Pack. Uh, it comes with two isolation pads, just foam, you know. Uh, the Nano Patch Plus Passive Volume Controller and two uh, XLR mic cables uh, and two XLR TRS cables. We'll have to look at those and see actually what connectors those have on them there. So I'm gonna open this dude up and see what's in here. All right, well here's obviously right off the top, here's the foam. Uh, speaker pads. And yeah, that's just foam cut at a funny angle. I don't I don't know. I don't know if I'll be able to use that on my stands. I'll have to, to show you my speaker stand setup in a minute. We'll have to take a look and see if that's even something that'll help or not. Maybe it will. I don't know. We'll see. But that's just regular foam. So I'm not sure that's that's a deal with the whole package. I mean, I guess the meat of this package is going to be in the other two items. This, uh, this box, I guess, probably has the cables in it. Let's take a look at that. See what uh, what cables actually came with this. Let's see what we got. Yeah, this is uh, yeah, this is just a balanced cable. XLR to TRS. Uh, seems like a pretty nice cable, actually. Whoa, let's pull that out of there. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's a pretty nice cable. I don't know what this. I don't know what this connector is. It's really not like a brand on it or anything, but I don't know. It seems to be a good quality. It's it's not bad. Uh, so yeah, all four, four of them are balanced uh, XLR to TRS, uh, but I do see a problem for me, and that is, is these are XLR, these are male XLRs, and I have male XLR output on the back of my mixer. That's not going to work. I don't, hmm. I don't know. I have to decide whether maybe I will still be in the monitor. I don't really want to be in the monitor else, but maybe maybe that's uh, what I'll have to do. I don't know. We'll look at that in a minute. And on the nano patch, uh, two channel analog passive volume control. Um, it just has a big potentiometer wired in a box. Is all this this thing uh, really is? So let's take a look at it. A little instruction thing. And here's the arrow patch. Uh, if you don't know this, like I said, this is made by SM Pro Audio, which is an Australian company. They make a few different kind of uh, monitor, monitor control things and some other little little devices nano patch so you have inputs on uh, on the two-way jacks it's either going to be you can take XLR or the TRS end on the input and the output uh, is just going to be balanced TRS and it looks like there are some other little little eighth inch jacks here well, I guess those are maybe little stereo jacks. I don't know. I have to look at that. Uh, here's the front. You have a master volume control. It's the big knob uh, and a mute button. Uh, it's made out of metal. It's a pretty nice little box. It's not bad at all. Actually, the potentiometer feels really good. Hmm. Let's see. Patch. 
Yeah, as well as a 3.5 mini jack connections. Oh, that's cool. Huh. Alright, sweet. Well, I guess the next thing I'll do is, uh, is look at how I'm going to hook this up with my system. I think these cables, I really wish these cables came as females. Hmm. I don't know. I'll have to figure that out. I'll be back. Okay, well, uh, I got a solution. My my uh, mixer, the outputs are male XLR balanced. And the cables that came with the SM Pro are also male, so that's not going to help me. But I actually already had some female uh, XLR balanced out to a quarter inch uh, live wire cables that I bought it. Guitar Center, and I actually bought these for my setup when I originally got the mixer and couldn't use them, and I almost returned them. Uh, but now they're going to be the perfect thing to plug the nano patch into my to my mixer. So I'll use these two cables from the mixer to the nano patch, and then two of the nano patches cables from the nano patch uh, to the LSR 305s. Win. Okay, so I've made the first connections. I've got my uh, two. Uh, female XLRs into my Behringer uh, outputs here. Uh, and by the way, I don't know if I said it, this mixture is a Behringer uh, 1204, a Zenix 1204 USB. Um, I know what everybody thinks about Behringer. They don't have, have a very good reputation, especially their mixers, but these Zenix uh, 1204 uh, and there, I don't know, they have several models of this one, the Xenix uh, USB mixers. These things are actually fantastic mixers. It's like, these are no joke. They're extremely quiet. There's no noise in this thing. Uh, and it, it works really good. Uh, and it is USB. It has a, a USB cable that you can see. And I'll put it right there. So it acts as a a two-channel interface which I, I use right now primarily because it's really all I need to do. I like to to just just play live and mix things into there, you know, sometimes I send my I mic up my guitar cab and everything and uh, send it in here and you know maybe roll off a little a little bottom or whatever, clean up the mix and just uh, send it straight in the computer that way. It works great. But anyways, I hooked up the first part of this monitor system so I'm in my the main outputs from my Behringer here with my female XLRs that I had to myself uh, to use with the nano patch and I decided to put the nano patch here to the left side of the computer actually it'll I'll probably bring it up about there uh, you know obviously I'm right handed so mouse on that side to operate Reaper and and this will be good here to Operate volume and stuff, and then reach the MPC and everything. So I figured that was a good place for it. But uh, anyways, I brought those connections out and uh, back up here to the back of the the nano patch uh, and got those plugged in. These feel these felt kind of cheap. These connectors when I I plugged them in, but I, I think they'll be all right. I mean, this thing isn't going anywhere. It's just going to be sitting here, so it'll be fine. I'll uh, connect up uh, the other cables and. Uh, show you that and probably start doing the uh, the monitors at that point okay I've got the uh, output cables installed on the nano patch and those are the ones that came with it and I'm coming out um, uh, quarter inch uh, balanced and I've got a uh, a uh, XLR on the other end that'll go to the actual JBL speaker uh, before I put the speakers up there I should talk about my my speaker stands uh, real fast. These are uh, actually an okay okay set of set of speaker stands. They're, they're actually not bad at all. I got them off Amazon. Um, and they're they're these things right here. They're called Video Video Secu Two Heavy Duty PA DJ Club Adjustable Satellite Speaker Stand. Uh, Forty bucks. They um, the thing is about my channel is DIY musician and uh, 
part of what I want to do on this channel is do a lot of builds and things. And one of the things I was going to do is build a set of speaker stands. That was going to be one of my videos. And I wanted to do that cool um, uh, speaker stand that you see on YouTube. There's a couple of videos. I'll, I'll link them in down below where they use PVC pipe uh, and a closet flange that's screwed to a piece of board and they put sand down in the center of the column of the of the pipe to make it heavy and stuff and this is really cool I, I went and, and priced out at the hardware store what that was gonna cost me it's gonna be fifty dollars is the cheapest I could get it so I searched Amazon and find a pair of speaker stands for forty bucks and these things they're not that bad they're they're made out of pretty good steel and they're they have pretty good uh adjustment on them they'll go to 47 inches tall uh they are a little tippy you know they they, they want to tip a bit because the bases aren't heavy but the tops of these things will uh come off sorry about the hands uh you can see down right there there is um and adjust that's the adjustment but if you loosen it all the way up you can take this this top section off and you could put uh weights down there you can just get some some uh weights from an old weight set or something on uh on uh craigslist and just put it around that if you need it i don't really need it right here because i actually have this big uh bench that all my <laughs> recording gear on is sitting on that foot so this one's actually, this is fairly secure. Uh, it definitely held the Elevate 3s really good. We'll see how it does with the, the much bigger JBLs. And the, these wings on this, they're adjustable for width. So you can adjust them out and grab the speaker. Plus, if you loosen this nut here, you can uh, basically pan and tilt this whole setup to, to get the speaker to aim right at you. It's actually... It's not bad. It's a pretty cool little thing for 40 bucks. Here's the other one. I've got it. This one I couldn't get the desk to really sit on it, so it's just kind of uh, down there. And it's this one's a lot more wobbly on the carpet, so I don't know. Let's see how that works out when I get to the LSR 305 up there. So here is the uh, JBL. LSR 305 monitor in, in the box and in case you didn't know there is a way to open a monitor box this is according to JBL it's not according to me but it sounds like a pretty good idea the idea being is that you don't open the, uh, the box and then reach in the box and grab the monitor and, and you know grab and ruin the tweeter dome or the or the Wolfer Dome, which doesn't sound reasonable. So I'm going to follow JBL's recommendation and do it this way. So I'm going to do all of this, get this open. Come out. Let it come out on its own so you don't ruin any of the speakers. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm serious. They really, they really do have a, a way to do the unpack, the unpacking of the speaker. So there you go. Whatever. All right. Well, there's the first uh, JBL LSR 305 mounted on these video SecU2 uh, speaker stands that I have, and I would have to say that that is the maximum size speaker that you could put on that stand. I really kind of not liking it right now. I don't know. I don't have the screw tight. That's all that's hanging down. It will be like uh, on there better when I get it screwed in there. But the biggest problem is, is I'm right on the wall. I was pretty close to the wall with the Elevate 3, so I'm really, really on the wall now. I'm, I don't. My connectors aren't going to have any room back there. So I don't know. I might have to to wind up sliding all of this rack and 
you know, everything that I have, I might have to slide all of this stuff forward to get it away from the wall to give a little more room for those speakers. Which kind of sucks because I, don't know, I, I have a small setup here and I would like to preserve some of the some of my room but man those are those are pretty big speakers and I'm right on top of them so let me look at that the monitor isolation pads that came with the uh, SM Pro kit I just I don't think I'm gonna be able to use it I just kind of won't won't work for this whole setup I mean it's just make it worse uh, this is probably gonna be pretty well isolated if I pan over to the other one I'll show you how this dude works you can see uh, that it's like a, it's a clamp the, the, these these ears they open up and there's a screw right here take a screwdriver and get into the screw right here and do that and the clamp on the opposite side is going to come out now um, it's a little a little awkward to get in there but you can do that and for that side then the other side has a one over here so that that spreads them out so you can fit whatever size monitor and then you just go the other way and draw them back together to clamp the monitor in into the stand so it's, it's like I said it's really not that bad it's okay um, I will admit the 305 the JBL LSR 305 is that's the biggest monitor I would, I would put on that stand I don't think it'd go any bigger than that. Okay, before I put the second speaker up, um, I did wind up moving moving the desk back from the wall, away from the wall. Uh, I'm at uh, eight and a quarter inches away from the wall now, which isn't too bad. I guess it's all right. It, it, it um, sorry, the camera work there. It uh, crowds this this rack a bit now. Uh, I guess it came out about I don't know, two and a half, three inches. I'll probably just adjust that rack out a little bit too. Um, it has enough room. I definitely got uh, that one plugged in and everything. It's fine. Uh, it has room behind it for the connectors and everything. I know it's close to the wall. It's not good for sound, but like I said, I'm really, really limited on my space. And before I throw that up there, I want to show you speaker a couple of things on the speaker so first of all the pots here are really really nice oh yeah, great uh, but they are at maximum volume out of the box so I would suggest turning that down to begin with there's also a, a minus 10 uh, plus 4 switch is recessed in there to avoid getting it bumped uh, and set to minus 10 that's that's really cool deal there and uh, other than that it's real nice little nice switch nice build quality you do each monitor is separately amplified so each one has its own power connector so you're gonna have to uh, allow for that figure out where you're gonna plug those in and I really hope that the, the this being a three wire grounded connector that this is not connected to the audio in here and really I hope it's just a ground for this this chassis because uh, it can really cause ground loops if this is gonna go if you have to plug this uh, into another place it's gonna cause another ground loop and I've had a lot of ground loop problems with my system I'll do a video on that and I'm gonna show you a really crazy ground loop problem that I had so hopefully that's going to actually be okay and, and work out fine. I wish they would double insulate or double isolate these and just use a two-prong cord and just not worry about about that. But this plate is metal, so I guess they have to they have to ground that for for safety. All right, it's a little bit later and as you can see, I've got uh both of the JBL LSR 305s on their stands uh, powered up and hooked up again the signals uh, coming out of this mixer on the main mix control it's going over to the nano patch 
coming out of the nano patch and going into the LSR 305s. Uh, I've cranked everything up to full volume. Uh, everything on the on the mixer, everything in the computer, crank the nano patch all the way up, and don't really hear hear any bad noise. There's no uh, ground loops or hum or or anything. Sometimes there's sometimes I get a little bit of a, of a, a kind of one kilohertz whine noise out of out of the capture card. Uh, from the S760, but uh, that's not anything to do with uh, the speakers or anything. I just uh, mute the sound on that capture card and that goes away. So, every, I mean, everything sounds really good. Um, and I've got the, uh, the speakers set up, you know, in the equidistant triangle. I think it's um, uh, three foot four inches between them and, and about where I sit here at this desk. My head's about three foot, four inches away from those things. Um, and as I said, these uh, Video Sec U2 uh, monitor stands, they they uh, they have a swivel swivel base on them, so you can tilt them all over ten buck two. And what I do, what I do is I use this level to compare them. Uh, I've got it to uh, left right level there got a little bit of down tilt on it uh, from front to back just to point it in my ears a little better let's move this over here this little two-way level is cool and you can see that one's basically the same a little bit a little bit of down tilt uh, level level left to right and, uh, and yeah it's it's uh, cool having this this nano patch on my uh, main outputs now because that means that I don't have to have my my headphones uh, hooked up with the monitors on this this monitor uh, knob for the control room out. Uh, you just push on this particular mixer. You just push this knob here that brings the USB sound card the sound from the computer will put it into the main the main bus and you can hear it and control it with uh, with your main faders there and then if you want to to monitor via headphones uh, you can listen choose to listen to the output of the computer this alternate bus that it does and also uh, the main mix you could listen to it and have your own control for the headphone that's real that's really cool uh, set up for this. There's some other small mixtures that do that kind of thing too, but the Behringers are particularly uh, known for having the phones and the monitor outs wired to the same pot, which really kind of sucks. They should have two two uh, potentiometers to control that, honestly. But uh, I've ran it a little bit, and uh, man, they sound great. They really do. It's going to take a while, obviously, to get it all trimmed out and everything, but it has a really solid base. The base that's not hyped at all. It's just fat. Just fat, solid, and, and kicking. So I'll go ahead and uh, play a little bit of this. A uh, little bit of this session I've got up here so we can hear some of that stuff on it. Crank it up a little bit on the, the knob here. Yeah. That's a Lin drum kick and it really kicks through these things. That's the output screen from the S760. You can see the kind of stuff we got in there. And of course there's a Telecaster that's playing off a of Reaper. And now you know the mute function. Mute works great. And I'm only at, what am I? Minus 45 dB. It's late at night so I'm really not gonna go loud. This thing can go really loud I'm sure. I've got the um, 
volume controls on both of the the back of both of the monitors set to seven uh, just to maybe try to give myself a little headroom but in the coming days I'll figure that out, all out and get that all staged up the right way but right now I really like this setup this this is gonna be cool looking forward to it so hope you enjoyed that video thumbs up and keep your eye out on the channel for uh, next installment of DIY Musicians